Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Sorry for this trouble. Hello. Hi um, again. Yeah, again. this time we we are trying from an Android. <laughs> so let's see what happens. I'll try with headphones. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe when we will show some stuff during the, the, the conversation, it takes a lot of band. I don't know why. It's first time for me on iPhone, but a lot of time working on Android always. Sorry for that again, maybe some connection issues. Uh, people try to introduce me, myself again. Yeah, let's do like we, we are starting again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, well, my name is Galina Yakovlev. I'm visual effects supervisor, and on this commercial advertisement, I was hired as on-set visual effects supervisor. And uh, right now, you see some backstage from myself. Uh, besides, uh, can you hear me nice? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Is it I hear you perfect. I hope everything will be stable. At least for those people who remained, thank you very much for being so patient, <laughs> despite all the issues we have. We were really not expecting them, because everything was pretty stable. So, uh, yeah. this video, you've probably uh, already have watched this completely. You can uh, notice that it's a seamless three minutes of the uh, storytelling, which were, was made uh, with the, um, just the three takes used in the cut and uh, with some visual effects transitions in it. So the seamless effect was prov uh, achieved on visual effects step, but with a very precise planning, with the previsualizations, with tests, with uh, um, communicational improvisations and uh, some R&D provided by the creators. With me included, <laughs> but not so, on so early step. step. This is the first one video we shared before. Yeah. It was during uh, the pre-production section. Uh, actually, it's an additional shooting because the yeah. original plan of uh, showing the stadium at the background, uh, the plan was to uh, shoot a still image of the real existing stadium in St. Petersburg. And uh, we were going to shoot this. I arrived on the stadium and witnessed this. All these lamps, lamps all this noisy stuff making everything yellow. And of course, I had to say goodbye to the clean backgrounds on the compositing. So instead, I've shot reference uh, for the CG guys who from that moment had to create the CG stadium from the scratch. And they were using my uh, panoramas as the reference in textures, in lightning, in geometry and other other stuff. Uh, you're going to <laughs> my profile pictures <laughs> on my account in Instagram. Uh, so you this can subscribe to me right now. Yeah. And, um, uh, well, about what are these lamps for? Uh, uh, they're uh, made and uh, placed for growing the grass on the field. So they're absolutely necessary and uh, they're staying at that spot for months and we cannot remove them. And we had to deal without the real existing stadium placed in the same uh, city where we were filming. So, hi CG guys, <laughs> you're heroes. <laughs> yeah. Here there's another one, yeah. Yep. I'm showing in this way <laughs> because it's the only way we have now. But it seems more stable than before. I marrying yeah, you so. perfectly. 
<laughs> this is so the... this is a whole crew. Yeah, yeah. this is the whole around crew. One hundred and fifty people around. So uh, the extras and film crew, not everybody, but everyone who was wishing to make a final photo. Not everybody likes this. Okay. This is one of the other part of the, the final photo. So product. there were uh, basically three parts of the uh, final result. The first part at the beginning, uh, around the uh, tree on the blue screen, the second part in the another pavilion, and this is the third part, uh, where the cut was executed through the compositing of the phone image, when the ending of one take is composited inside the mobile phone and uh, continues up to the end as one endless take, uh, duration of which is 90 seconds with the previous part, it's oh. uh, totally uh, three minutes. 90 seconds of pain. <laughs> a bit of pain. No, it was joyful, it was a sport. Yeah. Because it took so much effort, so much uh, preparation, but when we did it, uh, we, we exactly knew what we need to achieve, what we have to do, what uh, where we can fail and where we cannot fail. So we were, everybody was pretty confident about uh, how to work. So it was not a known mystery on, or we will do it hard somehow. No, we prepared uh, as much as we could. So anything possible was uh, predicted on set. But of course there was plenty of uh, things which were not predicted on set. For yeah, example, because... uh, uh, the moment when uh, the shutting door was so much exhausted by the movements that at the last take, no, the pre-last take, one of the walls of set would fall on us. <laughs> it was not predicted. But yeah. as you can know, all the filmmaking is uh, surviving on gaffer's tape, so pe guys were taping anything together to make the one single exactly perfect shot and they did it after 60 takes we did a perfect shot which is ideal both in uh, production terms for the post-production and by the actor by by everything yeah i i pinned just now a question about how many takes for this well, uh, we were shooting everything during two days and on the first day it took around 50 takes on the first half and on the second half, uh, the second day, it took uh, around 67 takes or something around that. We were, uh, we were making a commercial about betting and we were betting about how many takes it will take. <laughs> Just yeah. to this is another piece of uh, BTS, guys. We are showing uh, in the yeah, top it's a part of the screen. So we were. I'm following the order of German. your post. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, their plane environment was rolled out to give a. Uh, cameraman the space for walking and uh, all the sets were moving just to allow him to walk with the camera on the specific part and uh, that's why we had a movable green screen that's why we had uh, some moving props some extras running in running out changing uh, uh, everything outside the frame borders to make the illusion that is, the environment changes itself. It's a this story. one is, is also so funny to see from, uh, from everyone is watching. Yes, I was uh, standing in that green screen corner and shooting in the opposite direction on the rehearsal moment. So it's a unique yeah. uh, opportunity to watch from the opposite angle. That's 160 crazy. degrees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many people I'm, were uh, curious about what's the transparent tent 
used on this, so, uh, which is uh, rolling up upwards at this moment. It was uh, made for the reflections, uh, which could appear on the glass sets of the sh uh, shops um, uh, set. So it was rolled up either. The library sets um, were also moved and he was going from the library to the bar and we can see to the stadium at this exact moment. Yeah. Here we can have some other kind of uh, BTS. We are putting the light off of the stage here on the green screen. It's for lens distortion. Lens yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talking about this. Well, uh, we were using one single uh, lens on this project because of the seamless nature of the uh, story, of course. But uh, so it was quite easy to place one single array uh, camera in front of the checkerboard and uh, to shoot all the all the steps of uh, focus in defocus and the sharp focus uh, for the CG guys who were working for match moving uh, later, who were tracking the shot afterwards. And what about this one? <laughs> <laughs> this is a corridor of the uh, film set between the uh, different pavilions. Uh, actually, the uh, on this uh, film studio, the, each door to the pavilion is painted with any kind of graffiti. In this case, it was Hitchcock. And uh, on another, we had uh, Alf, uh, Charlie Chaplin, so some different, uh, Leon, so some different nice stuff. It's just a corridor where extras, uh, by the way, of football players, of different players were uh, rehearsed uh, were training the movements about how they would appear uh, in the in the frame because they simply had no room inside the pavilion itself. Uh, we we have talked about on set montage on set sound design. Let's talk also about this topic. Well, yes, it was a very nice moment about on set montage uh, about cutting on set because. Uh, we had a very hard deadline. Uh, the first final draft, uh, the first draft of the overall uh, video for the producers uh, and their purposes for the client was just after five days after shooting. So we were trying to buy as much time for the vi uh, visual effects guys as we could. And uh, this also uh, required as on set, uh, cut on set, um, um, dealing with uh, the footage because we had to decide which take will be the uh, most uh, uh, acceptable for the final edit right on the spot. So uh, we had um, a guys who were working on uh, with the computer on set uh, doing some additional stuff. And we had a sound guy who was uh, editing uh, music uh, used on the set right during the shooting. For example, change the mu music notes, rhythm, to adapt things on the go. Because anyone was synchronizing movements uh, by hearing the jazz, actually, the actual jazz uh, which was playing uh, in Film Pavilion, because there is absolutely no other way to synchronize so many people at the same time time. People cannot just remember thing, so many things. They, they will remember things and acting in their step or uh, hearing the music. And on set uh, we were choosing the correct take, uh, delivering it to the post-production and they were already tracking uh, cameras rotoscope and rotoscoping uh, and uh, things out and all this stuff. So it was a really nice story about this because um, when we've shot the first part of the uh, video, we had to choose which one will be uh, the the most the single chosen take because they couldn't decide which one was 
after all, we had no time for this. We had to choose now. And uh, the director chose one. He picked up one variant. And after that, he picked uh, another variant. He had to choose between two, two variants of takes. And at one, uh, he had uh, everything ideal except one single part that the actor, Daniel, he uh, pressed the red button not in the specific ideal moment. And it was very important for him to tap the red button on time. But he didn't. He was late just a bit. And except this, everything was perfect. And we had another take, which was not so great, not so interesting, but way more easy in the visual effects uh, from some point of view and much more difficult from an uh, other point of view. And uh, we chose the first one because I've painted uh, Daniel's hand in post-production as digital compositor, making forcing him to tap on the red button on time. I was really glad that I managed this because I improvised with this uh, idea about I will fix this because I'm what uh, I'm looking at the playback. I'm understanding it. it's it's real uh, idea. I did it on post production. It took instead of eight hours, eighteen hours, but I did it, and everything except of this had minimal amount of, of unexpected visual effects, and we uh, and all the team made it. Uh, on time meeting their deadlines. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. <laughs> You're just I, silent. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was showing some stuff to the guys, but I want to hear from you more about your work, your career, how you started, what suggestion you want to give to other aspiring VFX uh, supervisor. Why not? <laughs> um, well, I'm working as uh, on-site visual effects supervisor for around seven years, I think, uh, from 2013. And in CG, I'm around 10 years already, so I had plenty of stories to share. <laughs> well, yeah. we can sit yeah, down yeah. to the <laughs> dome. Well, my advice for um, other supervisors, on-site supervisors especially, is to uh, know the, uh, learn the other people's job, what, uh, what their responsibilities, what do everyone around you do, what they should do, what they can do, and the most important, where, what they cannot do. Because you need to be aware of, uh, are you asking something uh, impossible or you're some, asking asking something easy for them. Because, uh, of course, people uh, cooperate when they, uh, you're asking something simple from them. Um, because something can be uh, diffi extremely difficult for you, but very simple for them. For example, move this Avenger away, away from the frame. It's the most simple example. <laughs> for example, because they will move, they will adjust the lightning just a bit. It will not affect the frame, but it will affect you on, in post. For example, uh, and the same uh, topic, uh, topic about this uh, movable green screen, because it was a way much more easy uh, for them to roll it up and down, uh, rather yeah. than uh, as originally it was planned to roll it on the Avengers in the frame. They will simply have no time for this. And yeah. I was uh, analyzing what can, uh, how it can be changed, how to make them uh, um, place in this green screen on time, because uh, the actor and the cameraman had to walk at that path. We had to uh, leave this space open. And I analyzed from different angles about how it could be uh, done. And uh, I, um, the one simple fact became obvious to me that the only moment we need this place to be open is just to let these two guys to pass this. Place. At the rest of the time, this green screen should be placed on, the, uh, on its place. That's why uh, I came to the idea that we just need to drop it once 
and uh, just to place it with uh, something heavy uh, at the below. And uh, the production grid, it was a way more uh, simple just to attach it from above and not to be worried about the huge giant tripods. And uh, as you can see, um, the camera w was stepping a very far away, so they had to place a, a big size of this. So the uh, rolling grid screen was a very good solution which was suitable anyone and uh, of course me <laughs> it's, it's mm -hmm. because uh, something may be simple for everyone so we need to know exactly which is uh, simple and which is not for example for the match movers I need to be aware that uh, the green screen surface must be stable for markers and all that stuff I knew that this area cannot be trusted by this breathing of the clothes. So we had another markers, another additional references. We um, just a bit adjusted the angle uh, of the frame just to take uh, the real set, which will be mar markers for, uh, for match movers by its shelves, books, and other dots. So constantly we have uh, the set, the real object, and the stable, not movable green screen with absolutely stable markers. So match movers will have um, something to, uh, to which they can attach. Uh, so uh, the knowledge of this, the experience of working with people gives me this knowledge. So, for example, uh, I mean, uh, this is an example of how it's useful to work uh, in, uh, in visual effects crew to become an on-set supervisor, because I work with them, I know what problems they meet, uh, what successes they meet, and I know the specifics of visual effects crew, and at the same time, film crew. They are different crews. They do not work together, usually. Only how I many people between them. For every, how many people for every single film crew and VFX crew? And what about also the budget? I'm reading some question. There's some question about this, about the budget. Uh, just an idea, not uh, to go in the details. And, well, uh, uh, I can't uh, tell you the de details because I'm simply, uh, I do not know <laughs> the yeah. budget numbers. It's not an information and I do not, I did not need to know it <laughs> to execute my job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, on set, with extras on set, it took around uh, uh, 150 people. Um, and on uh, post-production, the visual effects crew, uh, it was around 15 or uh, around that visual effects artists. So not many of us. <laughs> and it was uh, provided by um, a group of freelancers who were joined together to just help with the project because the post-production supervisor, he had some uh, guys and girls uh, as his team, but it was not enough. And I called my students, I called my colleagues, hey, are you, are you free? Let's help, let's have fun, let's earn some money. <laughs> well, uh, and uh, he called his friends and together we did all the invisible and visible effects for this final result. And the post-production, I mean, visual effects part took around around three weeks totally uh, from the beginning, from the shooting day up to the final of the compositing and 3D stuff and all, all the visual effects. And it took around, um, around a month maybe for the client to polish in all the wishes, edits, the sound design and all, all, all that stuff. So we were filming in January 2020, and just a few days ago, we all the crew had the permission to tell about this everyone. <laughs> and as we did. I want to show again the video. So guys, if you want to ask something specific, 
we we tried this live <laughs> this is the third live we did about this this is the project for those are connecting only now there's a lot of people that uh, spending amazing word of you galina for your work for your amazing work in this project thank you i'm so guys. happy to uh, to having you with us today and thanks for all the crew all the everyone who was joined on this am amazing project thanks to the director Ivan Krasny and the producer Sergei Skabo. They, they made a great job by planning and thinking out of this. Yeah, this Good. is one of the masterpieces of the year. <laughs> it reached amazing numbers, like really 20, 30 posts a year, like this. It's so amazing. Yeah. But I think is for the amazing results, but uh, also for the teamwork, because uh, it's so beautiful to see him, uh, this kind of teamwork, this perfect execution in the work. Yeah, I hope uh, there will be a lot of uh, the same awesome projects after the lockdown, when the film industry will rise from its knees, when it will be stopped paralyzed, because as, as maybe as in Italy, in Russia, it's completely frozen. Yeah, we'll yeah. For bit to mean... work. Yeah, unfortunately. But we'll get back in the race. <laughs> well, when, when you we're back in the race, we will chat again and maybe we can do something like this directly on set together. Yeah, also yeah, using yeah. technology, okay? Uh, the, all this lockdown and changes in uh, freelance environment will allow us to work internationally more to yeah, join yeah. several <laughs> projects and uh, to help each other as we did on this commercial between each other because it's it's just a fun and it's just a dream job if it exceeds your own expectations about what you can reach and as we did we were influencing inspiring each other on set so uh, it was very um, easy to gain more to achieve more to uh, dare and risk on something which you hadn't done before, and it gives the, gives the feeling that you can, you, even now, you can achieve more. So you feel yourself limitless at these moments. <laughs> and yeah, I hope yeah. there will be yeah. a lot of more, more pro projects around this. So if yeah, you are too. interested in working with me and with you, <laughs> just tap, 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 contact. <laughs> yeah, let's see in touch. We, we was hired in a couple of sets this year, but everything is deleted, is stopped, freezing like there. Is a, a problem, a global problem. So I feel uh, yeah. we, we are like, first of all, to be safe. Because it's not uh, uh, a simple thing now, and uh, we will be more strong after this period to focus on the, the important thing of the life and also on the important project that give us the best energy. Because uh, it's all about the, the good energy we, we reach through this kind of projects. When is a passion, no? Yes, and another great uh, thing about uh, doing some fast uh, projects, uh, I mean, compared to the feature films, which we do for years, one, one single film for years. Mm -hmm. I have experience of doing this. <laughs> because where came my 2018th year? Hmm, on one specific independent feature film oh my god so the advantage of uh, doing commercials and video clips is that it's fast and i like it uh, from the point of view of uh, vision, uh, for film industry that we uh, learn to work faster 
we spend yeah, less cool. time on pre-production we spend less time on post-production we constantly try to uh, save some time because there are our lives <laughs> the more we will <laughs> the faster we will uh, work the more work we will provide right especially yeah, in parallel yeah. so is, is I, always... It's always a good chance to learn more in, uh, in very strict times and you can put this experience also jumping in different kind of works because Peter has uh, some kind of rules and uh, in different works you can take something from uh, any different director, DP and uh, every yeah. professional in that. Yes, and it's an advantage of this lockdown for us because uh, yeah. before we had no time for communication. We were constantly on set, constantly uh, fitting deadlines. Yeah, yeah. We were working all the time. And when we were not working, we were learning tutorials, books, courses, master classes. And now we just can uh, share everything in, in life. And thank you for these uh, streams. It's amazing. It's a, a great source of uh, experience from other people. Um, so um, I'm, I'm right now uh, executing my own projects and study as well and uh, uh, chatting a lot of colleagues. And this lockdown is a good, great time for this because before you ha simply had no uh, RAM. Yeah. <laughs> for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so important what you said because uh, Oh, there's a big, big question, but uh, I don't know this language. <laughs> oh, I yeah, don't know. me too. And, uh, in English, please, in English. Oh, yeah. He's, he's well, this guy in Russian. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm seeing some characters. I don't know. <laughs> mm. So there's a question we already talked about it. Uh, if you can reply quickly about the wall. Timing, production, idea, and uh, everything to do. Uh, how do you think? Is it a question about these specific projects or overall about everything? Yeah, this specific project. Maybe well, for I those. Don't know uh, how... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know how exactly the time it took from the uh, uh, create from the director and producer to execute their idea. I think you can ask them in the next stream. Uh, but uh, it took a few weeks of pre-production in the precise uh, training of the uh, final idea using the prepared visualizations and building set and all this stuff. It took two shooting days for shooting the main footage. It took two additional days for shooting additional footage for visual effects. And it took around a month for visual effects and a month for the final touches. So, a few months overall. That's my answer on this question. Okay. I would love to save this live. So I think a good idea is to stop now so we can have a copy of that, okay? Since there's a lot of people connected in the same hours, there's a lot of traffic during this period. I saw a lot of crash in this period. So we, I want to save this one. So I want to thank you so much for your Thank Ava you so much, yeah, it was very nice and pleasure to be here. Sorry for the issues, but... No, it's but it, yeah. it's not uh, depending by us. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. We, we will uh, see you yeah, soon. We'll say, say good night and good morning. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks again. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks again.